A few years ago, I ran across this photo of Steve Jobs, which was taken about two months before he died from cancer. I have been a big fan of Mr. Jobs. He was famous in my home country, China, and of course in the Bay Area where I live. As a cancer researcher, I have seen many patients, but still, this photo is shocking. This man, this American icon, is just barely recognizable. He's so gaunt. Look at his legs. There are hardly any muscle left. Mr. Jobs had some early wins in the battle against cancer. His primary tumor was surgically removed, and he had a successful liver transplant. But in the end, it just wasn't enough. If you have witnessed friends or relatives with cancer in their last days, you may have seen them in the same devastating condition. Last year, more than 9 million patients in the world died from terminal stage cancer. This year, there will be more. Here's the problem. Doctors and patients alike believe that this state is untreatable, is the end of the journey for cancer. But you ask, if you ask why, nobody can give you a good answer. This is what you hear. It's too late. You know what? I disagree. I have researched cancer for over 15 years. I believe we cannot give our on so many lives there's hope for these patients, and we can win this final battle with cancer. We just need to think about the problem differently. We need true innovation. Let me explain. When you take a look at the whole field of cancer research, 99% of the efforts and the resources for the cancer cells, the tumors, and the methods to get rid of the tumors, to get rid of them as early as possible. That's because there is plenty of evidence that treating cancer early yields better outcomes. I completely agree with that. To treat the cancer, the earlier, the better. But tragically, most cancer patients with tumor relapse, like Mr. Jobs, died in the late or terminal stage when treatment targeting the cancer cells stopped being effective, when they have a condition called cancer cachexia. Hippocrates described cancer cachexia more than 2,000 years ago. He wrote, the flesh is consumed, the shoulders, the clavicles, the chest, the sides melt away, the illness is fatal. And today we know, although the most obvious feature is muscle wasting, cachexia affects the whole body. It dramatically reduces patient quality of life and well and the patient's response and tolerance to cancer treatment. Most importantly, cachexia directly kills the patient. Up to 80% of patients at late stage, suffer from cancer cachexia, and one-third of them will be killed by cachexia rather than by the tumor itself. In other words, cachexia directly kills more than 3 million patients each year. And today, despite the great tools we have, the great progress we have made in treating cancer, we still have no solution for this deadly syndrome.
Since I first saw the photo of Mr. Jobs, it has been locked in my head. I keep on asking myself how it is possible that the tumors could impact the whole body so profoundly. And is it really the tumors that are directly responsible for patient death? And can we save cancer patient lives when they have reached this stage of cachexia? That was what inspired me three years ago to quit my research job from Stanford University and start a company to develop therapies aimed at saving such patients. Because I believe we can succeed. So my first question was, what causes cataclysia? Most people think it's a tumor or multiple tumors at this late stage that cause it. So in order to stop cataclysia and save cancer patient lives, we have to attack and remove the tumors. This is thinking that underlies how we have been treating cancer for, for hundreds of years. But maybe we have been wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong to treat the tumors. On the contrary, I believe it is necessary and important to treat the tumors. And the decade of clinical practice has established the importance in treating patients with early and middle stage cancer. But for terminal stage cancer patients, the tumors might not be the main enemy. Let me show you some data from study on the white blood cells of cancer patients in the last three months before they died. We know a healthy person maintain relatively stable white blood cells, but in late stage cancer patients, different types of white blood cells have increased or decreased dramatically, and you can see from this figure. Since white blood cells, such as the neutral field and the lymph cells, are crucial components of our immune system, this suggests late stage cancer patients develop severe immune disorder in their body. So this immune disorder called cancer cachexia and ultimately kill cancer patients, we don't have direct clinical evidence at this time because we have no therapies designed to treat the immune disorder. But we have seen strong correlations between the immune disorder and the cachexia and the shortened survival of cancer patients. And this correlation exists in almost all types of cancer that have been studied. I also discussed this, this, this correlation with established oncologists. One is Dr. Philip Bonomi, a internationally renowned cancer doctor from Rush University with more than 40 years of clinical practice. Dr. Bonomi observed his patients who had a high neutral field count and low leaf sound count tend to have cachexia. And cachexia is significantly associated with, with short term survival and poor outcomes. So perhaps late dead cancer patients are dying not because of the tumor burden, but because of, of the immune disorder induced by the tumor burden, like they have severe autoimmune disease. I wanted to test out this theory, but how? Annual models provide a great tool for looking at this problem. Using mice with cancer, I reproduced the immune disorder that mimic late stage cancer in people. I found that, like in humans, the immune disorder correlates with the overall decline of health and the shortened survival of mice. Not only that, the extent of the immune disorder correlates with the extent of the illness. In other words, when the immune disorder indicators worsen, so does the condition of the mice. Keep in mind, the immune disorder 
both in mice and in human patients, is very complicated. Next, we treat sick mice to correct the immune disorder. You know what? Sick mice were restored to health despite still having tumors. Let me show you two short videos of the mice so you can see the incredible result for yourself. Here are three mice. You can see they are very sick. You can see that from the fur, from the posture, they don't move a lot because they have severe immune disorder in their body. They can only survive a few more days without treatment. Just like a terminal stage cancer patients in very sick condition. Here are three mice that have been treated. So their severe immune disorder has been corrected. You can see they still have the tumor, still have cancer, but they are, they are active and healthy. To recap, sick mice were saved not by getting rid of their tumors, but by treating their immune disorder. They did truly a paradigm shifting discovery, which demonstrated a promising and new approach to treating terminal stage cancer patients who had no options left. We are working hard to bring the treatment to patients and, early, and quick and possible. And our first clinical trial has been accepted by the FDA, and we are going to treat patients with our product early next year. I believe by treating the immune disorder, we can save hundreds of thousands of terminal stage cancer patients from death. The late Steve Jobs was famous for his mantra, think different. It's true, to innovate, we must change our thinking first. Not just as cat researchers, but as cat doctors and patients too. We cannot and should not accept so many deaths caused by late stage cancer. So don't give up. If your cat patients, there are still hope for you. If your parents, spouse, or sibling is a cat patient, there is still hope for them. We are determined to create the breakthrough therapy for patients with the so-called terminal stage cancer. I believe with true innovation, we can win this final battle with cancer. Thank you very much.